All right, so this is Appendicular Skeleton Part 3, and we're going to start here at the top of this sheet with this bone called the ilium. Now, these three bones here, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis, are three pairs of bones that form the pelvis. Now, you can't see it, the whole thing in there because the pelvis is pretty, pretty big. But there's actually six bones that fuse together to make the pelvis. Okay, At the top, there's this big elephant ear looking thing here. You see that? And this is called the ilium. The ilium. On the ilium, there are two things that you need to know. Okay, uh, At the very top of it here, and this is palpable, if you feel like the front of where your hip bone is, what you're feeling is the anterior portion of what's known as the iliac crest. Then it goes all the way up on the top here, like this. That's the iliac crest. Now we learned a word that means shallow indention, folks. What was that word? Fossa. And that's what this is. This is the iliac fossa. Now, this is a pretty huge bone. Uh, structurally, it's important. There's a lot of muscles that attach to it. And your pelvis is also one of, it's called the pelvic girdle of the body because that's the part of the body that attaches your legs to your torso. Just like your uh, scapula and your, uh, and your clavicle make up what's called the pectoral girdle, which attach your upper body to, uh, or up, uh, your arms to your torso. Okay, so this is the ilium. And there's a lot of different things named after it, like uh, there's blood vessels uh, that are named after it because they're next to it, so on and so forth. But that makes up the majority of your pelvis. Now down here, you'll find like what's called, what's kind of like the butt bone right there. Not your tailbone, but like the bones that are underneath your butt muscles. This is called the ischium. Comes up to about there and curves down around like this. This portion is the ischium. And again, it's difficult to see where one begins and another one ends because they're all fused together at this point. Now, when you're really young and your bones are still cartilaginous, you can see the borders of these in an x-ray. Now, on the ischium, there wasn't really much that there's not a whole lot of markings to note. So just this butt bone part right here is ischium. Then the last one here is called the pubis. For obvious reasons, it's in the pubic region. The pubis has a few different things that you need to know. Its borders are right here. This is the pubis on this side, and this is the pubis on this side. Um, it's connected together at this portion right here. This is a ligament that holds these two together, and that's called symphysis pubis or pubic symphysis. It's the same thing. okay? And this ligament actually... Uh, during pregnancy, will uh, hormones will cause it to soften so the hips can s stretch a little bit. These bones will allow for a little bit of give. But for the most part, they're pretty well fused together. Um, underneath the pubic bone, there is this angle that's formed. And that's called the subpubic angle. Sub for below, pubic for pubic bone, and then the angle because it makes an angle. This is a this is a useful piece in in like basic forensics because you can tell uh, from a skeleton if it was male or female by the subpubic angle. If this angle is 90 degrees or less, then this skeleton is male. If the angle is 100 degrees or more, it's female. Usually, there's a pretty big difference between the two. Both of my skeletons I have in the lab are male. These, though it looks from there like that angle would be greater than you know 100. They're pretty much right at 90 on this. Um, and for obvious reasons, uh, you know the reasons that I just mentioned, birthing them babies. Okay, next. Uh, this right here, this gigantic opening, is called the acetabulum. This is the portion to where the femur attaches to, uh, to the skeleton. And it's a lot more encapsulated. It would be considered, yes, a fossa, but it, it, it's more of a cup than, uh, than the glenoid fossa is. And that allows for a lot greater strength in holding the femur in place. Um, and so, yeah, that's the acetabulum. That's where your hip socket is. 
And then the only other major marking is this gigantic hole right here called the obturator foramen. Why is it a foramen, folks? It's a hole. Because it's a hole. Precisely correct. That hole, in most cases, the holes in the body, if there's any holes in bones, it's going to be blood vessels or lymphatics or nerves that are going through those holes. In this case, there's nothing. It is sealed over with a ligament. There's nothing that travels through there. I'm not 100% sure why it is, but I believe it has to do with uh, decreasing the weight because bones heavy to have a hollow space would make it uh, less heavy, I guess. All right, that takes us then to the femur. Your femur is a leg bone. The bones of your thigh basically is your femur. It's huge. It's an enormous bone. Uh, largest bone in the body, as a matter of fact. Well, we'll start here at the proximal end, and I'm going to flip over to the posterior side, so you can see these two huge bony chunks there. The first big bony chunk here at the top, and you'll notice a similarity. We have a greater and a lesser on this, just like we did on the humerus. This time, this process, this big bony chunk, is called the greater trochanter, which means that this guy right here would be the what? Lesser trochanter. Good. And what's their purpose, gang? Like every other bump. That's exactly right. To attach muscles. There are muscles that attach here. This one here, the head of the femur, there is only one neck for this. Okay? Whereas the other one had a uh, had a uh, you know an anatomical and a surgical neck. Here's the head, the rounded part, and the neck is just this whole area beneath it. That's the neck of the femur. On the posterior side of the femur, also you can feel this ridge on the back. There's a raised ridge on the posterior side of the femur, and that is called the linea aspera. Linea aspera. And this is also a point of attachment for a number of different muscles. Linea aspera. I looked it up one time. Well, linea means line. I don't remember what aspera means. Maybe you should look it up. Okay. Now we get down to the distal end. Let me show you the proximal. Okay. Heads on this side. When we get down to the distal end, here are these two rounded things, and they're both condyles. Is this one medial or lateral? medial because it's closer to the midline. By the head of the femur you can tell where this one is supposed to be. So this is the medial condyle making this one the what? Lateral, lateral condyle. And these rounded projections are what form that knee joint up with the tibia which is the bone we'll be looking at the next portion here. Now in between the two condyles we have this indention or groove. And what was the word we used for these indentions? Fossa. This is the inter, which means in between, condyler, condyles, fossa, groove. So this is the groove between the condyles, literally intercondylar fossa. On the anterior side, you have this thing, which is where your patella goes. Now, this little hole is a bit misleading because in this model, basically, they just have the patella and it's shoved through there. You're, you don't start out with patella. Guys, what's a patella? It's a kneecap. Very good. Okay? Your patella develops inside of a tendon. You have four gigantic muscles here making up the quadriceps. The vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, and rectus femoris. And they all come together, and they all connect to the tibia. What, we, what happens, though, is every time you bend your knee, this particular tendon gets pulled over and over and over this surface again and again and again. As your body's response to that, a bone develops inside of that tendon. And that's where your kneecap actually is. It resides in that tendon to make a uh, surface that has a lot less friction between the two and to spare that tendon all of that damage.
okay? So that's where the patella actually resides. It's not attached to this. When we go see the cadavers later on this semester, they'll have one of these opened up, and this is actually clipped, and it's flipped back so you can see the inside of it. So it's pretty cool. All right, so that's it for this section from ilium through patella. So that'll be the end of part three. And join us in part four for the tibia through the end.